Well, how do there, chums? So, over on the Discord where we play Light No Sky, which is when we play No Man's Sky Like It's Light No Fire, I asked the people that were in Season 2 if they could keep an eye out for a floating island planet. And they've only gone and found one, and it looks just like the Light No Sky, or Light No Fire, planet. So I'm going to hit up the code. Sadly, I can't share this out with everybody, and we probably will. Sh I'll share this code out after we've done season three of Light No Sky. Anyway, I'll see you on the planet at the other side. This was found by one of my members called High Tech. High Tech, if you're watching, thank you very much. So I'm showing off this planet, not just to show off. I'm showing this planet because there is a few issues with it currently. I mean, it's one of the floating island planets that everybody's looking for, but you might want to change your mind after you see the contents of this video. So here we go, we've arrived located up the opposite end, and it says first contact. This was found by high tech, it wasn't found by me, which is a little bit odd. Discovery service and all that sort of shizzle, but look at this. It's got lovely trees on this planet. And it's got the floating islands, most importantly, which looks like something straight out of Avatar. And, you know, my ship looks like it's straight out of Avatar as well, doesn't it, people? Now, my last video was a little bit pixely. Now, I sort of just entrusted that Hello Games had improved all the graphical settings. But no, to get these graphical results, I'll show you my PC settings towards the end of this video. But I want to try and find an island now that has, like... A waterfall coming off of it there you go look these ones over here now let's go and land on the island so this is what I'm being told is a bit buggy now I have been told that certain ships are a little bit haphazard with landing but I have heard that some people can land on them I can land on these islands with ships that hover in place but you can't land on islands with ships that can't so I can land on it with this one but then saying that people have said that they can't land on these islands with the starborn runner I would say try landing on it with your latest ship. This one can land on them. There seems to be that some ships can land on them, other, sh other ones can't. And look, look at this, look, the river. Isn't that, it's pretty cool. I mean, you don't move on the river. It's like it's made of glass or something. The effects aren't as good when you get up close and personal to these islands, but I still think they're pretty darn freaking cool. So here we go, let's head on over here, hide menu. And look at that. I mean, it is a waterfall. We now have waterfalls in game. We've been saying that we like waterfalls for ages. Now, I have seen some people struggle to land on the smaller islands as well. So it might be that you can only land on these nice big ones. But you know what? I think this planet serves our purposes lovely for the light no sky challenge that we're doing. I'm just going to have a look at the discoveries. There are 16 creatures to be found on this planet. Mostly ground, mostly active. Nice. There's even a rare one in the north of the planet, apparently. Coolio. There's no rare flyers, are, is there? Okay, we've got two uncommon flyers. I don't think we're going to have beetles or um, any sort of flying mounts that you can tame. I don't think that's going to overly be a problem. Every event that we've had so far, people have brought stuff along. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to rename this anyway. Uh, so here's this one here. I'm going to name this as potential. Well, I, I, I'll name it. I'll be a second. Okay. Well, I've called it the LNS Season Three, found by High Tech System, and the actual planet itself. I've just called it Light No Sky Season Three Planet, which is pretty darn cool. Done, deadly, and done. I'm not going to scan anything on the planet. I'm going to make this video, present it to the guys, you know, Ricey and Cynical, see if they want to sign off and say, yes, this is a planet that we're going to use. But I'm loving the blue skies. I'm loving these islands. Let's take a look at the water on this planet. Let's see the colour of the water. Ah, oh, look at them clouds. OK, let's just try landing on a smaller island quickly, because some people are saying that they, they're falling through these islands and they can't land on them. Yeah, look, I can fly through it. I can fly through the smaller islands. So this is what they're on about. Now inside the patch notes, it says jump from island to island. You, you can't really, you can't leap, hop, skip and jump from island to island. The only islands that seem to be that you can land on and do anything on seems to be the bigger ones with the waterfalls. I mean, this one's quite large, but no, I can still fly straight through it. Let's see if I can fly through the one with waterfalls on. Or whether I bounce off of it. Let's have a look. 
No, see, I can't fly through that one. And I can land on this one. So it does seem to be the bigger islands you can land on, the smaller islands you can't. I can kind of live with that, especially for the event that we're doing anyway. And if you didn't see season one and two, basically there's like there's going to be four factions four factions in season three ghost light is heading up the new faction so if you want to join ghost light it's freaking awesome if you haven't seen ghost light's channel hunt him down in fact i'll put a link up there just to make it easier for you but he's awesome so yeah anyway i'm going to fly in find the oceans so there's there's a few factions there's ricey as well ricey starship emporium again awesome content creator if you haven't hit him up he does loads of starship finding if, if the name didn't sort of give that away and then there's also Professor Cynical. And Professor Cynical heads up the Coriola Kingdom. Now, Cynical, if you don't know Cynical, he's like the glitch master of No Man's Sky. He finds duplication glitches. He finds, like, weird things and oddities inside of the No Man's Sky verse. And he brings that into this, this whole freaking event. He's always doing something weird. Um, usually involves murdicating people to the point that we might actually adapt the rules a little bit differently this time. Before, if you got killed, you stay dead. But what we're going to do is maybe only have that happen when you reach the PvP point. So for the first like week or so, we have like a massive great big building event. We set missions to go and find stuff. And it's really quite cool. Let's put the sun in the sky. Let's see what colour the water is. Oh, it's like a light blue. I like that. That is cool. And then after we've had the build event and we've done a load of exploration and we've had a load of like little mini quests that we've given people, we go into PvP. And it's sort of like the last man standing type stuff. And it really is quite good fun. Okay, even nighttime on this planet looks quite nice. I want to see a little bit more in the daytime. I go back to the day side of the planet. Okay, jumps. Well, I did mention showing my graphical settings as well. So here we go. Let's go into my old graphics. Displaying graphics. So I've had it boardless. And uh, this is the resolution that I'm running at, which is pretty cool. I mean, my capture card captures at roughly 2K. It says that it captures in 4, but it really doesn't. you got V-Sync on. And uh, so that stops screen tearing. And I've changed my max SPS up to 240. And that's my graphics card that I'm using there. Scrolling down a bit. My presets are custom and I've got like texture quality on high, animation quality on ultra, shadow quality on high, post processing on ultra, reflections, I've moved that down to enhanced because it it interferes with other things and that's what's causing the pixelization, which is a real shame. The volumetrics though, I've put that onto ultra. Now Jason has his on high. The only reason I've added it on ultra is because I would really love these new clouds and I'm hoping it helps with that. Terrain tessellation as well is what's also causing that pixelization. So I've put that down to enhanced to match that to Jason's. And then I've also put this on high, water quality on high. I was tempted to put it on ultra, but you know what? I don't spend much time in the oceans. I mean, yes, I might spend a little bit of time at the actual uh, lakeside. I've, I've stood at the lakeside on ultra and on high. I physically don't see any difference with my eye peepers. But base complexity, I'll put that as high as well, just because I know that I visit a lot of planets that have got big big bases on, and I don't want to put it on ultra because that might cause my frame rate to take a dip as the base lose, uh, loads in. So I've left it on high. Antistrophic filtering, I've put that on 15. Gato, I've left that on high. And anti-aliasing, I've actually turned that off. Now, I know that Jason has one of his... Um, he's got a different graphics card than me. He uses GeForce, and he's got a GeForce one in there that isn't available to me. But because I don't know enough about this anti-aliasing, and every one that I've selected on my AMD gives some sort of weird pixelization or a film grain or makes it look like it's from sort of some 80s movie, I turned it off. I've also turned off motion blur. Yeah. So that's that's my settings. That's what's working for me. And that's what's giving me this nice, crisp, super sharp sort of look in here. If you look at my last video, my tips video, I had everything set to ultra in that. And you'll see that this actually looks better when you dial it down a notch. Ultra, I don't know what Hello Games has done, but they've got settings that conflict with each other. So it's best to dial down some of those ones that conflict with each other. Uh, and then you get a super sharp, awesome image like this. OK, people, that's my settings anyway, for those interested. Jums, the more I explore this planet, the more I fall in love with it. I mean, look at these 
these fronds, these oh, they're freaking awesome. They really are. Let me just, I think I might be in creative mode. Let's just stick it back into normal, just in case this has got extreme sentinels on here. <laughs> That'd be terrible. I mean, it's the perfect planet otherwise, isn't it? Okay, let's have a scan. Sentinels are limited. Brilliant. The weather does have superheated drizzle, but I think I can live with that, especially with all these new volumetric effects. This planet is just ticking all the freaking boxes right now. It really is. Okay, so a new rule that we're thinking of implementing is if you've had your previous saves, like, you know, my Viking save, etc., you can just carry on using that previous save. So all the tech that you managed to get from last season carries over. You know? Or if you want to start a new character, you can. It's completely your choice. It depends how much time you've got to invest in the grind and if you enjoy the grind. So the choice is yours. So rather than have knights this season, especially with Ghost moving over to his own faction and a couple of the other people that have played in other factions, like I think Boo Boo Kitty might be going to join Ghost. So there might be a little bit of a rebalance and a restructuring. Also, last season, I had far more people in my team than the other teams, which gave me an unfair advantage. So this this time we might be asking people to select one or two different Tr uh, groups that they want to be part of so you could put first choice captain steve second choice ghost light or first choice crayola kingdom second choice ricey and it might be that you might not get your first choice depending on how many people are already in that crew but you might get your second choice we might even put first choice second choice third choice i don't know but um i'll leave it down to um uh, uh, cynical because he actually puts the forms together but hopefully we'll be putting together new rules and things like that we just want to give people enough time to get into this update, experience the update, and then put it out there. Now, there is an expedition about to run as well, so we might let the expedition kick in and let it run its course for a couple of days until, you know, we've all done our content on the ex actual expedition as content creators, you know, like Ricey, Ghost, Cynical and I. And we might come back to the season three in a bit, but it's happening. It's definitely happening. So stay tuned, keep an eye out on our community tabs and our discords. And you, if you are hoping to join Ghost, make sure you go and hit up his discord. Go hit him up on um, YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. I mean, he's over in the US, so we're adding a whole new time zone to this as well. So if you're a US player and you found it hard linking up with myself, Ricey or Cynical due to time zones, that might be a reason to go and hit on up Ghostlight because he's in the US. Heck yeah. And we are hoping each season now to look for maybe another content creator that's been with us through the seasons. There's Gifox Gaming, there's Good Guys Free. There's a couple of people that we might consider then making a faction leader in, uh, in the next upcoming season and grow this out and just see how it goes. We want to see how it goes. But yeah, hit us up. If, you, if you're liking this idea, make sure you go on to one of our discords. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit all of our notification bells because we will be putting the MS form, you know, Teams form or whatever it is, Google form. It's a form that you fill out. It's more for vetting reasons. We don't really want people that are going to come in and troll. We have got a list of known trolls to events and things. So we're trying to cut down on people that are going to ruin this event. So, yeah, get yourself over and uh, make sure you're looking out for that. Like I say, it might not come out until maybe a week into the expedition running or four or five days. It depends on how much, much time it takes to do this new expedition. It looks like this new expedition is going to have a community driven bar where we're unlocking this new mech. So it might have time gates in it. So it might be a little bit longer than what I'm envisaging. But at the same time, I'm loving this planet, um, high tech. I really am. I'd imagine in between now and when we go live, myself, Cynical and Ghostlight will probably be here putting down our team headquarters, making sure that we're an equal liberum distance away from the portal from one another so we can really get this event going. I'll probably get my PC save with a load of eggs and give it to my my crew save so at least I can distribute a load of flying mounts because we're going to need them to get to the top of these islands because yeah we're not allowed to use our ships not allowed to use our ships because we're playing no man's sky like it's light no fire so yeah we only build out of wood and out of stone 
And yeah, now we've got a planet that looks like it's straight out of Light No Fire and this graphic overhaul is going to feel so much more like Light No Fire. It really is. I'm, I'm totally stoked for this. I'm super excited if you can't tell people. I guess I am. So anyway, like I mentioned earlier, if you haven't seen us play in No Man's Sky like it's Light No Fire and you've got no idea what I'm on about, I put a video series over there. I put the... Actually, I made a season one movie. The whole of season one is a movie. It's like a couple of hours long it's insane i'll put that over there go watch that i mean the, the rules are going to evolve a little bit from that but it gives you the general gist and idea till next time salute mondo goodbye goodbye and goodbye again Whoa, uh, oh, Seven and a half. yes here we go like and subscribe thank you to all Sir Honorus Gong